it's incredible to think that there are five seasons of Solar Opposites. Five, five. That means someone's, someone's watching the show. And that someone is me. Yellow, my little filmer dudes, my name is Ivan Montero. Thank you for joining me in my journey to watch every TV show ever created. Not really, but we are going to get close. Welcome to my spoiler free review for Solar Opposite season five. So if you've not seen any of them, you're well and dandy to go and uh, proceed with this review. In all, there we go. <laughs> There we go. In all seriousness, I do want to talk about the fact that in today's standards, we're almost trained to almost expect a low amount of seasons and think that's okay. Especially with Netflix canceling every single project after one or two seasons, where at this point, it's commonplace for a show to end after two to four seasons. Three is usually the magic number nowadays, but if it lasts to four, that's kind of like the most, the max. It's like the Disney effect. Disney sitcoms never got past four seasons, max. And nowadays, that's kind of how it feels like. And you really do hope for a solid ending, and sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. And I am looking at you, Umbrella Academy Season 4. <laughs> so when a show does surpass the half decade mark, it kind of puts into perspective how little uh, five years really is. And then it puts also into perspective how little, but still at the same time, how much 10 years actually is. And a whole decade. Like a lot and not a lot, but my early onset life crisis aside, you do realize how far a show really does come after surpassing five years, five seasons. But what makes Solar Opposites different and stand out from other shows is that I feel season five feels almost like, like an over medium, medium well soft reboot. And I'm a surfer at the breakfast diner. I'm going to use breakfast lingo like Flintlock Woods dad uses fishing terms. Season five presents a bunch of new ideas and even solidifies itself in what I would call brand new lore, almost retconning some of the things that we've seen in the past, but in fun, creative, and insanely subtle ways. Trust filmer dudes, that first episode dove deep into the chaotic deep end and kept Swimming. And from there, I can't really speak about anything that happens without going into spoilers. But I, I, t I guarantee you, the things that happen in the show makes it feel more like a softer reboot than season four was when they had to switch Corvos. You get the classic solar opposite sci-fi shenanigans chock full of meta humor, fourth wall breaks that are way better than any of the Deadpool breaks, in my opinion, and lots of hilarious profanity. <laughs> Dare I I say Solar Opposite season five might be the best season so far, at least for me. I know some people think it's just another episode, it's just another season, but I think this is the best season so far. Because of the added lore and because of Dan Stevens. I feel with Dan Stevens taking the lead as this new version of Corvo, Corvo is almost allowed to fully be himself this season, while opposed to last season where it was a little bit of a change, they were trying to find their footing and it was a little weird. And I, I, I liked it. At first I was like, this is a little bizarre, but I kind of enjoyed it. And this season, it almost felt like the writers had free reign to do whatever they wanted. And it kind of, it fit, it fit so well. The show always manages to make me laugh out loud and this show, no different. And I love the meta humor that it has and something about that new Corvo and the newly developed relationships and the people being the people, but being like an older people, but also being reset back to the original people. It, it's it's for hilarious. Season five's humor seemed super elevated this time around and I full of preach. Season five, as always, brings back the wall and Glenn and the silver cops. However, these almost feel like brand new stories involving the older stories. They feel like soft reboots for those stories as well. Wall now follows a new pair of protagonists, but it all ties into the first four seasons of The Wall and the ending for The Wall is phenomenal. And I know people are saying that they want a solo series of The Wall, but I say nay, nay. Let like a horse, I say nay. I would argue that the wall and solar opposites really only work in tandem with each other. Can you imagine just having just the opposites without having the wall or Glenn and the silver cops inter in intermixing and interrupting the shenanigans all the time? I feel like it would get tiring. The thing is, this season they actually intermixed the wall and Glenn within episodes of full episodes of the solar opposites. So instead of seeing one full episode of the wall and one 
one full episode of Glenn, you're seeing back to back, you're, they're cutting back and forth. And I found that to be refreshing and I found myself retaining the information a little bit more that th this time around. And it's the same, exact same thing with Glenn, where he left off in season four, his storylines now seem also like a soft reboot. So again, this whole season seems like a, like, like a whole soft reboot. I wonder if that's intentional because this show seems like they has no intentions of stopping, especially with the finale for the opposites. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it's gonna, where it's gonna go for season six and season seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11. I will keep watching all of the solar opposites as long as it comes out. I will watch and rewatch. I'm gonna try to rewatch the first episode. No, no, for the first season. That'd be great. I just don't know if I have time. I really want to, but I really like this British Corvo. So we'll see if I can go back to Justin Roiland's uh, Corvo, which I have nothing against. It just seems like a poor man's version of Rick. Honestly, The Solar Opposite's one of my favorite shows. I just, I, I love it. I love it so much. I tried watching Rick and Morty. It's, I can't do it. I don't know why. I feel icky every time I watch it. Uh, maybe one day, but I just, <laughs> I don't know. It's not my favorite. I don't really enjoy it. It's, I just, I don't, I don't like it. But Solar Opposites, I like, I love it. This, this is great. And Solar Opposites season five gets a 9.8 out of 10. There's just a little, a little things that were a little bit jarring in terms of its narrative and storytelling that makes it a little confusing when you're watching it. But once, once you watch the whole thing, everything kind of makes sense. But I do appreciate this season's tone, the season style, and the fact that this does really feel like a fresh new take, a new direction for Solar Opposites. Like we have the, the first four seasons, the first era, I guess, and now we have this new era, and I just think it's going to be a really good time from here on out. Let me know your comments down below. Have you seen Solar Opposites? How many seasons have you seen? And which one is your favorite? Let me know all of that in the comments below, and my social media links are in the description below, and I will see you next time. You've just been modified.